Hi guys, it's Lisa Unger and hi Oline, how are you? Um, I am so excited today. So um, thank you for being here for Three Good Things. I haven't been doing Three Good Things for a couple of weeks because I've been literally doing everything else. I'm sure all my pals out here on Facebook and, and uh, Twitter and Instagram and um, you know, I know my, my newsletter folks, you guys have been so amazing turning out for my events. I've had some really spectacular Zoom events on my virtual book tour. So I've been doing three good things for a while. So I'm super excited to be doing it today. And I'm super excited to have Aline Cogdell, who is a renowned mystery critic for the South Florida Sun Sentinel. Um, she's just a superior writer and a thoughtful, careful reader. And um, I'm just so blessed to have her here today. Thank you for joining us. All I am so glad to be here. And I also review for Publishers Weekly, yes. uh, Shelf Awareness, uh, Mystery Scene, and Associated Press. So, so I, I'm, and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> It's amazing. And thank you for everything that you do for authors and for books. It, you know, it's just such an important role and you do write for so many, um, so many really important publications. So thank you for that. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. You know, um, I know we're going to talk about a bunch of other things today, mm -hmm. but can we start talking about your book first? <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Is that a problem? <laughs> um, I, I you can see my notes when I read, I always take notes. <laughs> Um, I loved Confessions on the 745. Thank you. I thought it was just, and I said, though, said so, of course, in print. I just thought it was a spectacular book, and it really kept me going and guessing where you were going to end up at, mm. because it's kind of a girl on the train, but not really. It's right. kind of a strangers on the train, but not really. And it very much is a family drama about a lot of different family aspects, which I think you often do write about. What was your inspiration for this particular book? Um, well, you know, so there's always, um, there's always a moment. There's always like kind of a germ mm -hmm. for me, right? And so in this case, it was just like a thought that I had kicking around my head for a while. And I don't even know where it came from, but it was this idea that you can't con an honest man. Huh. And I thought, huh, that's interesting. But, you know, it sounds a little bit simplistic, overly simplistic. Nothing in human psychology is ever so simple. And so I wanted bringing it up in a green room before a mystery panel. And I, um, you know, uh, one of the, my other author friends who was on the panel said, I don't know, that kind of sounds like victim blaming to me. And I thought, yeah, okay, that, yeah, that's true too. So I, you know, so I had that kind of thing in my head. So I started doing some research on um, the art of the con and I wound up finding, stumbling onto a book called The Confidence Game by Maria Konnikova. Hmm. And okay. it's a super interesting book um, that uh, dives into the psychology of the, of the con artist, um, sort of lists some common scams and some famous con artists, and then also the psychology of the con. And um, basically, my takeaway from the book was multiple. It was that one that, you know, most people think that they're too smart to be conned, um, but everybody is vulnerable to a con. Oh, yeah. And the other thing is that you, um, it's not that you can't con an honest man, but maybe you can't con somebody who doesn't want something. And everybody wants something. And the con artist is very good at figuring out what that is, maybe better than, than you are yourself. Mm -hmm. So that was like sort of the, that was sort of the, the seed for it. And so like, it, then of course I started hearing characters boy, character voice for me, the two main um, characters in the early, early voices I heard were Pearl and Selena. Um, and so I was also very interested kind of in that, like, you know, the liminal space, the space between things, um, you know, like when you're in a train, you know, in a train or a cab or an airport or an airplane, and you're not the person that you were when you left, you're not the person you're going to be when you get where you're going, you're in this kind of like suspended space and that sometimes in those moments you meet a stranger like somebody mm -hmm. you've never met and they everything in their life and everything in your life brought you both to that moment in time and so I feel like there was a kind of an energy there that um 
is very is fascinating to me. So that was the other, you know, obviously it's inspired by the the concept of um, Strangers on a Train, the Patricia Patricia Highsmith uh, novel. Most people would think of it as the Alfred Hitchcock film. But um, I, you know, uh, I've always been kind of interested in that moment. But sort of that's where the similarities between the, the stories end. I just like like the energy of that moment and the idea that you could meet somebody in a strange place at, at one moment and that it could change both of your lives. And that's that's a scenario I think is very typical. I mean, it's happened to me. Yeah. I once was on a plane with someone, a woman whose daughter had died recently and they had custody of the teenage gra uh, granddaughter who she started telling her what a mess she was and how upset she was. And it was obvious to me, the girl was grieving and no one, she just wanted attention and just went on and on. It was like a two hour, I just wanted to read a book, probably yours. Um, <laughs> it, it just, it never stopped. And she was telling me just really intimate things. Right. Cause we're never going to see each other. And we certainly hoped never to see each other again. Exactly. You know, and I think that, you know, there's a little bit of Jim Thompson's The Grifters in in your book yeah. and you know it's 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 propelled by greed but as you said there's also something else in there and oh. i i loved your characters because i thought each of them was very real and i love like selena and it's not really a secret because her husband's cheating on her and you yeah. say that at the very beginning very <laughs> and she likes the nanny better than she you know she's she doesn't want to fire the nanny even though that's her the because she's such a good nanny <laughs> i know and i think there's a lot of women that can relate to that you know like <laughs> it's really hard to get rid of a good nanny because like you can't always count on your husband i can count on my husband sorry honey i know he's like you know doing all the time oh your husband's great and so is mine but <laughs> right. we have great husbands but not everybody right. does and i think a lot of women can relate to that like Oh my God, my husband is, you know, having an affair with the nanny. What's going to happen to my nanny? <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> without giving anything away, you've written many books about the hollows. Mm. And I loved at the end, or maybe it's in the beginning and maybe it's in the middle. I'm not going to give anything away. There's a little <laughs> reference to the hollows. And I thought, oh, right. <laughs> Yeah, I am, you know, the hollows is always with me, you know, and it always is conspiring to get itself into every book, even though it may, the book itself may not be about it. So I always wind up, most books have at least the brief hollows cameo. Uh -huh. and, um, lately, you know, over the last couple of years, the vo other voices in my head have been louder. And so I've been doing more standalones, um, but the halls is always with me, and I know it's going to wind it back on the page probably sooner rather than later. Um, but it's always, you know, it always kind of occupies a space in my imagination. It's more like a, it's like a character for me. So it kind of, you know, it kind of, uh, you know, um, is a place that I return to a lot. So we'll, I'm sure we'll find it having its own, its own I've, space again soon. I've asked you before because. Your books are very dark, but you are such a lovely, bright, you know, happy person. <laughs> I, you know, I feel like I just kind of exercise all those demons on the page. I mean, I feel like, you know, I do live in the light, but like all my life I've had this like sort of very dark um, and twisted imagination. You know, I kind of think of myself as that, you know, the girl in the horror movie, you know, like everyone's in the theater and she's like, going down the stairs into the basement to hear what the noise is and everyone in the theater is like no don't go down into the basement I'm, I, that's me I'm the girl on the stairs going down in the basement because I want to know I want to know what's there I mean <laughs> <laughs> that's why I think that's why I write these like sort of you know dark books but I personally you know live in the light so yes you do yes you do yeah um yeah so um it was, you know, Confessions is, uh, you know, definitely was a was a wild writing experience. You know, all those characters occupied a very, um, oh, there's Jack Jack. I see. <laughs> his cameo. Everybody on Three Good Things knows that Jack Jack is going to have his cameo. I think that's great. I think that's great. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was an intense writing experience, and every character had a, a very powerful life, and, you know, I spent a, a lot of time with them, and 
you know, um, it was uh, a, a lot of surprises for me as the as the writer and hopefully for the reader as well. Um, so we had a bunch of things that we want to talk about today. Um, we, um, we're going to talk about some books and we're going to talk about some stories that we love. So I, um, I'll start off by asking you, um, other than my book, of course, is there any, of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> is there anything else? Um, what else are you reading right now that really just kind of blew you away? I think this year has been a stellar year for mysteries. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. I mean, this is a, a time that tries all of our souls. Mm -hmm. And many of us have gone into the safety of books. And depending on which you know um, industry uh, report, reading is up by at least 25%, which is great. Yeah. And there's been a lot of really good books this year. And I, I pulled out a couple that I think are just really terrific. One is by S.A. Cosby, which is um, I love that. Isn't that wonderful? He's so great. Oh my goodness! And I thought it was a debut, but it's his third book, which I'm really, you know, I can't wait to see more from him. Yeah. And I also loved Rachel Halzel Hall's. That is on my my TBR list, and she's now she's got, oh, it is again. Yeah. It is a a different take on the PI novel. Okay. And it's very, very different. And I re she just did such a good job with this. Um, I also liked, I think there's too many women here. No. <laughs> no. The Mountains Wild by uh, Sarah oh, Stewart. Oh, yeah. Taylor. I read that. I think I blurbed it, actually. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, there you are. Yeah, <laughs> there you are. Yeah, yeah. that is excellent. It, it starts in Long Island, and then she, it goes into Ireland. Yeah, where she is originally from to investigate the murder of her her cousin, which was more than 20 years ago, and something has just popped up. Excellent book, really loved it. Um, and I'm going to go through it really quickly. Yeah. Jeff Abbott, never <gasps> asked me. Jeff, I have not read it. I can't believe it. I've read almost all of his books. I can't wait. That's great. Terrific, terrific such, book. Such a great writer. Yes, and he does something too, like you do with the Hollows, is he has this neighborhood in Austin. That he often comes back to yeah. Yeah. different people and all that yeah um i really and i mispronounce this young man's name every time lone jack trail and this is kind of like what is going on right now with mysteries is it's about veteran okay uh, this is a female veteran and it's about a rescue dog mm -hmm. and a former um convict and i think owen just does a really good job of showing um the, the diversity of their, their personalities and how they are fragile and trying to make, become whole. And I really love this book. And Ian Rankin. I love Ian. He's so and A Song for the Dark Times is certainly a prophetic title for our times yeah. now. Yes, this absolutely. Is a Rebus book. And, you know, Rebus is retired and it's a new version of Rebus in retirement. Oh. He's really suffering from his health. He has to move from his upstairs apartment downstairs because he can't make the stairs anymore. And it, he just really, he keeps the series fresh, very fresh. And I'm also reading, it's no secret because I'm reading it now, uh, the new Michael Connelly. Yay, we love him. Next month. And I'm doing a, a thing with him and Joe Nesbo um, in November. And it's a Mickey Haller book. And he just Again, keeping things very fresh, you know, and that's that's the key, I think, to um, to a long running series. Yes, I think what is done is really interesting. Is we we can't get together anymore in person right now. Right. But the Zooms have really brought us new authors. I mean, I listened to Zooms from authors from Australia. Ooh. From um, Ian was I interviewed him the other day. He was in Scotland. And, you know, it, it certainly is cutting down on, on cost and travel and everything. And does it replace the in-person? I don't know. Do you think it does? Well, I don't think you can ever kind of replace the in-person, you know, like the being together, you know, exchanging energy in that way, touching, hugging, all that stuff. I, I really mess because I'm, you know, like kind of a very physical person. I always want to hug everybody. And uh, so I kind of miss that, that piece of it and, you know, just dinners and, you know, all the different stuff that we, you know, that we do together when we're on the road, we were just talking about this earlier, like how, 
special it is that, you know, as an author, um, you know, you, I, I have a lot of friends who don't not, don't live anywhere near me. Um, but I get to see them multiple times a year because we're all kind of traveling and all over the place. So that is a kind of a nice thing about, um, my work and, and the work that we all do. Um, but I do think that the zoom, uh, piece, especially on my, my virtual tour this year has been so amazing. I mean, I have been able to connect, you know, cause I have a, a lot of people who've been reading me forever and they're not necessarily ever able to come to a book signing. Mm -hmm. I may never go to their market, but now this year, so many people have been able to, um, to, to check in with me and come to my events and, you know, hear me talk to people like Karen Slaughter and Lisa Gardner and, you know, you and, and, um, and Abby Endler from Crime by the Book. And, you know, I was able to visit, you know, Boston and Houston and, you know, all, all different, all different places on, on, on Zoom. And so I think that there's this, this elevation where, you know, people who just, it may not even be that they couldn't, you know, or, or I wasn't in their market, but maybe they just couldn't even get to a book signing for some reason, or you have small kids at home, or you're caring for an elderly parent, and your life is not really your own in the evening, but you can, you can't maybe necessarily make it out to a bookstore, but you can um, maybe get in front of your computer for a little while and, you know, hear about books, and so that piece of it has been really, has been really special, and like you say, like my events have had you know, I've had people at my events from all over the country and all over the, all over the world. And the same is true for my three good things. I've been able to, you know, connect with authors in the UK and Australia and all over. And that's been really, that's been really special. And also your, your publisher can't send you to every city yeah. in the world or yeah. every city, you know, even in one state, right. you're limited. I mean, there's a certain budget and now it's, you know, it does cost to do the Zooms, but not nearly as much as putting you on a plane, hotel, tra you know, all that. Right. And you can just bring in other people. I just think it's terrific. Yeah, it's been very, very positive in that way. And, you know, I think it's definitely a silver lining of a really dark time that, you know, it's, you know, we are separated, but I think it's been kind of notable how everybody has like really worked to try to find new and different ways to connect. Exactly. We're trying to make the best of a worse situation. Yeah. And I, I, I just, I think it's great. Um, yes. And it, you know, so many of them, I think actually authors are doing more events now because they have Zoom. And often I think, and tell me if I'm wrong on this, it's often for independent bookstores. Absolutely. Yeah. To keep them, you know, going. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We, and we, we, we're going to talk about a couple of our of our independent bookstores that we want to talk about, but you know, a perfect example of this is it, it actually brings up two books that I was I'm really excited about. Um, I'm doing an appearance for HarperCollins Canada in a couple of weeks, and um, and you can go to my website lisaunger.com events to um, to find out more about that. But I'm going to be speaking with you know authors from all over. Uh, I'll be speaking with Alyssa Cole, um, whose book I'm just starting and it's, I'm already hooked. Um, she's, I think I have the cover right here. Oh, maybe not. Oh yeah, I do. Oh, when no one is watching. Oh, and now it's gone. All right. Tech Terrific book. Loved it. Yes. <laughs> I'm really, I just started it. I'm already hooked. I'm super excited to be speaking with her. Um, I'll also be speaking with uh, uh, Gilly McMillan. Um, oh, okay. on the same event, um, to tell you the truth is her most is her most recent she's an exceptional writer she's from the UK and this is a really interesting book that um, well it has one of my favorite features which is imaginary friends <laughs> you know how I feel about imaginary friends oh, that's true <laughs> <laughs> did, she wrote she wrote the nanny didn't she she, did. she wrote the nanny yeah, yeah, I like that, that book a lot that was last year she's just a really you know she's just a really um deep uh beautiful writer also very gripping lots of layers to her characters as well so I really enjoy um talking uh reading her and also she was on three good things she's just like a lovely person who I love to talk to and I'll also be um speaking with another one of my favorite authors this is all four of us together Sherry Lupina 
So she'll be, um, it's going to be a super exciting event. So she'll, you know, obviously Jilly and Sherry are in the UK. Alyssa is in the US with me. The publisher is HarperCollins Canada. So it's this incredibly international event, which probably would not have occurred had we not all pivoted to this new way of doing. Um, right, right. Um, and a couple of other things. I just got off the phone, off the Zoom, off the, what are we even saying now? We don't know. I just got off Zoom <laughs> with with Ace Atkins and um, uh, Colette Bancroft of the uh, ah. Times, and we did our traditional uh, our annual books and bourbon talk. That's something that Ace and I do every year for uh, the Tampa Bay Times Festival, but we did it virtually with bourbon. We did have a really good bourbon. And we talked about um, Ace's books, The Revelators. Um, Ace is just, you know, he is just an exceptional writer. And he has, he's um, following Quinn Coulson. And, you know, you just have a long relationship with these characters. And he's just, you know, he uh, personally is like my friend. And so, I have a couple of authors like that every year. I mean, uh, like Lisa Gardner, Greg Hurwitz, Karen Slaughter, Alfred Burke, um, and Ace. Like, I feel like whenever I pick up their book, I'm spending time with spending time with them, and that's how I always feel with Ace's books. And he's just, you know, it's just a very smart, um, well written, and always fresh series. And it was just picked up by HBO. Um, oh, I didn't know that. They bought the rights and um, it's so it's going to be, I mean, I guess if anything ever, you know, starts up again, it's going to, you know, sort of go into production. So that's kind of exciting for him. I, I love what Ace does with that Ranger series. Yeah. And also what Greg Hurwitz does with um, Orphan. The Orphan X. I, yeah. What a terrific series. Oh, yeah. So great. Evan Smoke is a really, really cool character. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, it's such a great, it's such a great um it's such a great series. And I think his new one is coming out in January. So yeah. that's all. I haven't got my gal yet. Hint, hint, Greg Hurwitz. I need my gal. I have mine. <laughs> oh my God. I'm heartbroken. <laughs> <laughs> another book that I read uh, or am in the middle of reading, I'm always reading like 20 books at one time. I don't know if you probably, well, obviously you do the same no, thing. Just one at a time, but I, I read fast. I am always reading multiple books at a time always and so this one and i'm a, like a lot of different kinds of books so this one is um is nonfiction. it's called the biggest bluff it's all it's by maria konnikova who i mentioned earlier as the right. author of the confidence game and this is her book about um how she taught herself to become a professional poker player ah. right yeah she got very like very very successful at it and so it's a book about poker, obviously, and it's a book about the psychology of the game, the psychology of the players, and also it is a book about, you know, mastery, mastery of self, and the role of luck versus skill in the game hmm. and in life. Yeah. My favorite kind of book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So many layers. So yeah, so those are some of the things that, that I am reading right now. I can never, I was saying before, I can never say what my favorite books of the favorite books of the year are because I have too many friends and there's too much talent and like I just, you know, would hate to ever leave anybody out. But um, these are the things that I'm currently reading and, um, you know, enjoying and uh, I'm looking forward to my talk uh, with some of these exceptional writers and, and Ace and uh, my also my my the Tampa Bay Times Festival of Reading, which will be airing virtually November 12th through the 14th. Okay. Yeah, I just think the, the and the mystery genre to me just gets better every year. I think so. Deeper stories, deeper characters. Don't you think so? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, I've always felt that some of the best people writing are writing in crime fiction. Oh, yeah. You don't really have to look any further than like, you know, Laura Lipman and Kate Atkinson and Dennis Lehane and George Pelicanos and you know, Allison Galen, Allison Megan Allison. Abbott. Exactly. Yeah. Just some of the best people writing are writing crime fiction. And I think that's always been true. But, you know, definitely. I think people are, you know, looking at looking at things from different perspectives. There are more layers. There's, you know, greater character development, and I think that that's really, um, you know, uh, 
special. I mean, it's just a, it's just a really fat and, and where else are you ever going to get as deep into characters you can get into it as crime fiction you know I mean I just think there's so many opportunities to really explore human nature within this framework that are just fascinating oh I agree I agree and I I, I joke that everything I know I've learned from mysteries because if you look at the historical ones now they are so well researched yeah. Yeah. I mean you you know you're in that era like the Charles Todd right with World War One. I mean, you, you know, you're with them. Yeah. And I mean, just, it just gives me such hope for our genre. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think it's very, you know, it's, a, it's an exciting time for, for these kinds of books for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And so that'll bring me to um, another important um, thing about our industry and our time right now is we're just going to talk about a few of our favorite independent bookstores. Um, speaking of what you just said about crime fiction and historical fiction, my, one of my very favorite local stores um, in my area, we're going to talk about South Florida most especially, but Tom Below Books in St. Pete, Oxford Exchange is, uh, is my indie in Tampa. These are two extraordinary stores that have really just supported me tremendously and who I very much appreciate. Um, uh, Tom Below Books is hosting um, me for a book club event uh, in, at, on November 5th, where we're going to talk with book groups about um, Confessions on the 745. But it's the, what's interesting about it is it is the launch of their crime travel book club, which they're going to host out of, they're going to host out of uh, the store every month, or maybe not every month, but at some regular interval. And um, one of the co-owners, Candace, she, she had said that she, what she finds so interesting about reading crime fiction from other countries is that, you know, she learns so much about different cultures through crime fiction novels. And so I, that made me think of it when you, when you said that about the historical period. So it's kind of the same thing. And, uh, and so she's going to do a few domestic authors a year, but she's also going to do a lot of um, authors from other countries and sort of, you know, uh, have that be the focus of the crime travel book club, which I thought was super. super oh, I love the idea. That's well, a great idea. Great idea. Yeah. So yeah, so that's coming up also on my events page for book groups who want to join for that. But we most especially wanted to talk about um, some of the South Florida stores. Uh, I read an article in the New York Times and then also in the Los Angeles Times about how, you know, our local bookstores right now really kind of need a boost. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, more than that, it's just a way to not only just support the stores, but also to support um, our communities by, you know, if you're going to, if you are a book buyer and you are going to buy books, for gifts, it's a great idea to buy them now, to get a jump on your Christmas shopping at your local bookstore because it helps the store um, and it helps, you know, readers, you know, your reader pals who are your friends who you're buying gifts for. Everybody loves to get a book as a gift. I mean, it really is like such a special thing, especially if it's something that's meaningful to you. And, you know, we just wanted to put that out there right now. Um, to readers, if you are looking to buy books this Christmas and that you know that's the thing you're going to do, this would be a great time to do it. And there are different, you know, if you have a local store in your area that you want to support, that's great. But we're going to talk about a couple of our South Florida stores mm -hmm. that we like. Um, I will, uh, I guess I'll start with, um, I, I guess I'll start with Key West, um, Books and Books Key West which is just a beautiful store in Key West, which is a very special, um, very special place in my heart because that's where I met my husband, Jeff. Um, not at a bookstore. <laughs> I, <don't laughs> I remember your story. <laughs> yeah. At Sloppy Joe's. Um, that's a whole other story, which we could get into some other time. But um, so Books and Books Key West is notable because it is owned and run by Judy Bloom. Mm -hmm who, you know, obviously iconic author. I had the opportunity to interview her on stage here at the Tampa Bay Times Festival of Reading. She is an absolute, you know, she's an icon. She's a legend. There's nothing, there's nothing else to say, except that when you walk into Books and Books in Key West, 
you may very fi- may very well find Judy and her husband behind the counter ringing up your ringing up your back. <laughs> I've never been to that store. Oh. I haven't been to Key West in a, in a while, oh, yeah. but I have heard such good things about it. And I, I want to get down there, if nothing else, just to go to the bookstore. I mean, I get books, of course, from the publishers for reviewing, but yes. I'd love to go into a bookstore. I mean, to me, that's just, that's heaven. It is, of course. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And there's, um, but you, you, I'm sure you've been to uh, Books and Books in Coral Gables. Right, which is owned by Mitch Kaplan, which is not, as I know, affiliated with the one in Key West, right? I think they're, um, I think they're connected, but I think they're, they're separate. Like They're I think separate. It, I think it was, I'm not, well, maybe he could clear that for us. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know if it was just a, you know, sort of like a satellite or whether they have a, a you know, a, a relationship or, or what the story is. But I think- I'm they, sure one of our astute readers will do a, a Google yeah. and let us know. Books and Books in, in Carl Gables is just a magnificent store. Again, it's an yeah. independent store. It has a restaurant there. I don't know if that's open right now. It has a little yeah. bar and it has such a great collection of all types of books. And yeah. they have so many different events that if you looking for any type of book, mystery, poetry, Spanish, you know, whatever, they have it there. And it is such a beautiful store. I can just get yeah. lost there. And yeah. it's very comfortable. Yes. You know, it's a comfortable store. Yes, it really is. It's very, really- very high on that. Um, one of my favorite bookstores, which is in Delray Beach is Murder on the Beach. Murder on the Beach, a favorite which of Which I think may be the only mystery bookstore in Florida. I It mm-hmm. certainly is on this coast. I know there used to be one in Clearwater. I don't know if that's still there or not. It's definitely not. There's definitely no no mystery bookstore in Clearwater. Yeah, but they, you know, Murder on the Beach in Delray Beach specializes in mysteries. Yes. And again, they have like book, the other two books and books, they have a lot of Zoom events, yes. which, you know, to, to bring in authors and, and again, to support the independent bookstore. Yes. Um, I, it's a great store. They just moved and they're next to a library now in Delray Beach. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It's a smaller store, but it still gets a lot of good people in there. And of course, now with the Zoom, they can be anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been to I've been to that store and had many many events there and you know many fun times in the store um and you know whenever I go down to South Florida I try to to try to get to murder on the beach it's like you know one of you know one of the one of the nicest mystery stores so that's exciting that you know they've moved in there next to the library which I always find you know the events that sort of incorporate a library and a bookstore those are some of the best events because oh yeah yeah, oh, yeah. you know just a nice union of book buyers and readers and librarians and booksellers and all kinds of bookish people. <laughs> well, I remember a few years ago we you and I did an interview, like three interviews on one day, and it oh, was like right. at three different libraries, and it was the turnout was really good. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh my God, when was that? Was that like oh it was three years oh, ago, four years ago? I think five. I, Oh my God. Time means nothing now. It means nothing. It means nothing. I, I... But we went from Lighthouse Point to another one. Yes. And then up to Jupiter. Great. You're right. We drove all over. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And it, it was packed. I mean, yeah. uh, each of them was, well, I thought very, I think Delray Beach was one, the yeah. library there. Yes. I can't even remember. Yeah. But... A lot of really, really good ones. Yeah. That's right. Wow. That was seems like a really long time seems it does and um there's one other uh really good independent bookstore my favorite Spiro Beach Beach Book Center (laughs) yes and again I did an interview with you a profile for Publishers Weekly right I can't remember how long long ago that was but they were kind enough to give us a little room that's right that we could you know just sit and talk and and you know I could do the interview it was there's such nice people there Yes, that is such a great store. And I've been there many times as well. And I do remember that. I think that that was like, I'm thinking that was like seven years ago that we met at Bureau Beach. But maybe it was yes, maybe it was a year ago. We don't know. That's right. It could have been March. Who knows? I had an event at Reads and Company in Pennsylvania. I was interviewing James Lee Burke 
um, for his new book, which is fantastic. Um, and uh, I was saying to Jim, oh, I remember when you were on stage at BoucherCon with Michael Connolly. And he was like, oh yeah. He's like, that was, uh, that was 20 years ago. I was like, no, it wasn't. He's like, yeah, it was. I was like, really? oh my God, it was, it was Vegas. <gasps> that was 20 years ago? It was like, maybe like, okay, so I'm trying oh to think. So what? It might have been. It was like maybe eight, maybe it was 18, something like okay, that. Okay, that sounds much better. Oh, yeah, that's much better. <laughs> You're right. That's much better. It's not 20 years ago. That's right. Much, much better. <laughs> yeah, like maybe 18. Okay, maybe like, yeah, something like that. I, I guess once again, maybe somebody can Google this for us. <laughs> I'm sure one of our astute readers when they In the comments on Facebook and let us know because we're all like have covid brain we're like lo we're losing we're losing our minds we have no sense of time and space anymore that's right that's yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> so these are just an example those are this is an example of just a few um you know south florida stores that you know if you're in the south florida area it would be great to support these stores if you you know you can also support them online of course um you know i know that especially places like murder on the beach they tend to have a lot of signed copies you know they, yeah, they do have, they have a lot of signed copies and they may even have copies of books from you know earlier visits not even this year they might still have signed copies so if you're looking for signed copies that's a you know that's a great place to look and, um, you know, and then of course, you know, you have your store, your local store in your area. Um, so either, either support an independent bookstore online or the one in your area. And that's just a great thing that, that you can do right now. I mean, it's just one of the like sort of ways that you can support your right. community if you're looking to buy some books and, you know, who isn't? Who isn't? And sign up for their, there's, their Zoom events. They've yeah. had some really good ones. Um, yeah, I think um, I forget. I just did one with Ian Rankin, which was really great fun. I love him. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm doing one with the Charles Todd's in oh, December. Great. I love them too. Yeah. yeah. And there's other great independent bookstores across the country too. There's Murder yeah. by the Book in Houston. I was just there. I did that with Abby Endler of Crime by the Book. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Poison Pen. Poison Pen. Which I did. And, uh, Politics and Prose in Washington. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing an event with them with Michael Connolly and Joe Nesbo in November. Okay. Fantastic. And that's going to be a lot of fun, I think. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, definitely. Yeah. That's going to be amazing. So what have you, have you been doing besides books? Um, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Something else besides books. Are we going to talk about TV? You want to talk about television? <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> Oh, we, we just watched, um, we just watched Away on Netflix. Um, oh, okay. it's, it's with Hilary Swank. Yeah. And it's basically about her, you know, it's a, a woman who, who leads her family to go to Mars. She's an astronaut. And so oh, it's, okay. it's basically, you know, like all the excitement of like a space voyage and all the family drama you can think of all rolled into one really cool, um, super interesting show. Um, that's on Netflix, really, really super fun. And, uh, and the other night, uh, Jeff and I just watched an extremely funny movie called Save Yourselves. Hmm. And it's about this kind of Brooklyn hipster couple who decides that they're going to unplug from their devices and go out into the country and just completely like have a tech detox. And it's about what happens to them while they're out there. It's, it's not totally terrifying. It's also funny. So <laughs> do they, do they start a farm or something? Is that the um, one where they start a farm, start yeah. farming? There seem to be, I think there are a lot of these types of movies um, right now, yeah. people just disconnecting from the world and going out into the middle of nowhere. And of course, horrible things happen because I mean, that's what happens. Right. Um, but in this case, it's actually kind of funny, but uh, I'll just give a little hint that it has to do with aliens. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not giving that, I'm not giving too much away because it kind of, they, it kind of comes up pretty early, but it's, it's a, uh, 
it's very, and I think it's even in the trailer. So they're, you know, definitely, there's definitely discussion about it, but you know, bad things happen on, okay. an, on an extraterrestrial level. And then other than that, other than books and book tour and writing, you know, I'm in the middle of my, like sort of the editorial process on my, on my next book. So I'm in the middle of that right now. So um, other than that, that, that's pretty much it. That's keeping me, you know, full time, you know, um, I, and obviously, you know, uh, parenting a teen who's in virtual school. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so we're kind of navigating, navigating that, um, that moment for our family as well. But, you know, other than that, not too much, you know. <laughs> Well, you know, one of the things I really miss now, along with everybody else, yeah. is live theater. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, my husband's a theater critic, and oh. we have a website called Florida Theater on Stage, right. which beginning of March was just packed with openings, like 60, there's like 60 theaters in the South Florida area. Yeah. So three or four nights of the week, we were at theater, not anymore. Yeah. But what I like is like some of the local um, troops and, and theaters are having online events. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's a reading or a play or a group of people getting together and singing show tunes. It doesn't take the place of live theater, right. but it makes us realize how valuable that is yeah. and how much we yeah. miss it. Yeah, and that's such a, and that's such a great thing too, that, you know, so many people, so many artists have pivoted to the, some, some online things. Like at the beginning of the pandemic, I wound up, you know, I was looking for some things to do um, for Jeff's birthday and we're, you know, we're big travelers and also, you know, theater goers and, you know, all of that. And like all that was just kind of, you know, obviously not happening. So we wound up um, connecting with this, this jazz singer and jazz piano player in London. And we they and we we got a whole bunch of our friends together and they gave us a private performance via Zoom. Oh wow, how cool. It was amazing. I mean, it was like, you know, obviously if we had been in London, we would have sought something like that out um, to do, because that's you know what we love, but we weren't able to travel this year. So we just kind of I tried to find ways to do um, that sort of thing. And it was, uh, it was actually through Airbnb and they offer a lot of um, different experiences like this. And, you know, we did a sound bath meditation uh, with a woman in Singapore, um, like all different kinds of events like this. And we kind of felt like it was our way of like supporting, you know, the arts community in this new way, you know, cause obviously, you know, they're not out playing in jazz clubs. They're not giving sound bath performances or whatever so this was our way of just kind of trying to you know have an experience and yet and also support an artist that it's probably you know it's probably a really difficult time oh I love that I love that Lisa it was really great it was really great and so I highly recommend any of those virtual experiences you know not just the book events but also you know um anything like that that like sort of gives you an opportunity to be someplace that you can't be yeah Exactly. Yeah. Until yeah. we can all, till it's back, it's, then we're back. <laughs> exactly. Until we're all together again. Um, Aline, thank you so much for being here with me. Uh, oh, I, thank you. My pleasure. I appreciate you so much. And I'm, I'm so glad we got to do this. And I know, I know we were going to try to do a store together, but I think that we, you know, made the best of the situation and we got to talk about so many different things and I'm, I'm grateful to you. I think this was a lot of fun. And thank you for inviting me, Lisa. This is, I enjoy this very much. Wonderful. Thank you. So great to see you. And um, we will uh, definitely be together again soon. Somewhere. Absolutely. Look forward to your next book. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>